Hello everyone, a warm welcome to Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre's Thursday Healing Service. My name is Pippa and I'm one of the visiting chaplains. It's a real joy and privilege to be with you wherever you are. Jesus is with us as he promises and extends his invitation of love to all of us. And he meets us just as we are. His love is unconditional. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for inviting us into your presence. Lord, come to us now in your risen healing power and ignite the flame of your Holy Spirit within us. Come and move amongst us wherever we are. We bless you, Lord, and praise your name and welcome you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. And so we come to our first song, and it's that lovely rousing one, O oh God, beyond all praising. us have been living indoors for a considerable period of time over the last year. I found myself gazing out of the window a great deal and that is a real blessing. But the other day I was struck by how different the view can be from just one window. The four seasons can completely transform what we see and they're each wonderful in their different ways. And just like God's creation, our lives have seasons, don't they? They may not progress from one to another in a regular cycle, like the natural world, but they are seasons nevertheless. Currently, we're in the middle of winter, and I felt led to make winter the theme for this healing service. As I thought about all that winter means, I thought God was showing me 
that there are parallels between the natural world in winter and our spiritual lives. And we're going to have a look at some of these. First of all, it's obviously jolly cold. Sometimes we just get a bit chilly and need to put a jumper on, but it is possible to become dangerously cold. Similarly, our relationship with God can become cold if we drift away from the warmth of his presence and we don't go, we don't take steps to go back indoors. However, the good news is that God doesn't just let us go off outside and disappear. Maybe you remember a parent or guardian shouting at you to come back indoors and stop messing around in the snow. God gently calls to us and leads us back to the warmth of being beside him. Of course, what we really need when we come back in is a nice roaring fire, the fire of his Holy Spirit, to melt away all the chilly parts within us. We only have to ask, if you're feeling a bit cold spiritually, Ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you afresh and restore the warmth of relationship with the Father. Whatever it is that may have caused you to drift away, it's not too difficult for the Lord to deal with or beyond his mercy to forgive. As the song says, such love, pure as the whitest snow. Secondly, we've all looked out of the window and thought, ooh, it's bleak and it's foggy, I don't fancy going out in that. And sometimes the winter weather can cloud our vision. It can be really frightening when you hit a patch of fog when you're driving and you're almost completely blinded. Sometimes in our spiritual lives, we can't see where we're going and we grope around in the mist. Maybe the mist is patchy. It lifts for a moment and we think we can see the way. And then it descends again and we're lost. When we're in the car in the fog, the safest thing is to stop and wait for the road to become clear. And we need to do that in the spiritual sense too, to pause and ask God to restore our vision and redirect us. It's not always easy to wait, is it? But it's the safest thing to do. And remember, God isn't sitting in the dark and the fog. He sees the road ahead and his timing is perfect. He moves us on when the time is right. I've just mentioned roads and the next thing I felt the Lord prompted me with was black ice. Winter can be full of hidden dangers and black ice is really treacherous. It lies in wait for us unseen and only disappears when the warm sun comes up and melts it away. There are hidden dangers from wintry times in life too, which spring up on us and catch us unaware. COVID-19 has been just such a hazard. Suddenly it was just there, causing people to skid and swerve with many fatalities. And of course, Satan loves to trip up on trip us up on the ice and cause serious injury if we can. Occasionally, the hidden danger can be of our own making. Perhaps we haven't prepared by sorting our driveway to prevent ice forming in the first place. And all this reminded me of how very much we need God's safekeeping. And he is indeed Elohim Shomri, God, our protector. 
In Psalm 91, we're told, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Psalm 121 also tells us that he doesn't let our foot slip. Let's read this lovely psalm together, which is so reassuring. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And now we come to our second song. And it's Jesus be the center. Let's think about a few more wintry themes. In the cold weather, the ground becomes hard and rock solid with stony bits and lumps. It can require spade and fork or even a pickaxe to break it up and make it more manageable. Sometimes the soil of our lives 
becomes resistant to the Lord with hard lumpy bits where we've grown cold. Maybe there are some frozen rocks not of our own choosing, such as sickness, fear, grief or loss of some other kind. Situations that seem impossible can make us harden up, or perhaps some sin has crept in. Our Heavenly Father is the master gardener, and he doesn't take a pickaxe to us. He gently irrigates us with the water of life, quenching the dry, thirsty ground with his Holy Spirit, and gradually melting away the unruly lumps with his healing touch. All through the winter, he never stops preparing the soil for the planting he has planned and the fruit we shall bear for him. However, it's important to remember that we can still bear fruit in winter. We're so blessed by the beautiful berries we see, like the red holly berries, and the view from our windows just wouldn't be the same without the evergreens. Earlier I spoke about ice. My neighbours and I are blessed with a pond here in our garden. And I felt the Lord drawing my attention to it. In the depth of winter, we can see frozen water everywhere and our ponds just look completely inactive. But all is not as it seems, there is life underneath. The fish are still alive right at the bottom where the water is not frozen. They're in a state called torpor and they wait there in the cold and as the water warms up, they gradually become active again. Other things in nature also wait. The little hedgehogs hibernate, having hopefully prepared in advance and eaten plenty to build up their fat reserves. You have to be ready for winter. We do need to prepare for the seasons in our lives and that can include waiting. I'm going to read a poem about a tree called Still She Stands. And I was quite blown away by this poem. The dark season enters her land. The creator of light feels distant. Still she stands. Her leaves begin to change and fall, stripped to nothing, naked to all. Still, she stands. The air is frigid now, the horizon bleak. Lonely and cold, she fights defeat. Still, she stands. For she's endured life seasons before. She has faith, he will restore. She stands firmly planted as harsh elements assault her branches. But in him her roots are deep. She will not be moved, her faith she keeps. Each day is closer to when the sun stays longer and the dark is shorter. To when her branches will blossom vibrant colours of life and she's enjoying his warmth, embracing this time. For seasons come and seasons go, but his constant love remains. In this she knows. His spirit is within her. She trusts his plan. She's following him. So still she stands. I just want to finish my talk on a very positive note and remind us all that winter is beautiful. 
It's glorious to look out of your window on a winter morning before anyone else has disturbed the view. Crisp frost on the leaves and twigs, lace-like patterns on the ice and branches festooned with snow. An artist couldn't do better. And that's what God sees when he looks at you and me. My beautiful creation, jewel in my winter crown and beloved pearl of great price. His love for us is constant throughout the winter and for all eternity. Let's have a few moments of quiet. And so we come to our prayers. We begin with a prayer by David Adam. Lord, as we enter the, into the stillness, calm our hearts and our minds. Let all the storms within us cease and enfold us in your peace. We come in weakness to you for strength. We come in our sinfulness for your forgiveness. We come wearied by life for your refreshing grace. We come out of our darkness to your love and light. Lord, renew, refresh, restore us by your presence and your power. And prayers for healing. Dear Jesus, you are our healer and we come now to ask for your healing touch upon our lives. Come Holy Spirit, come in power to meet every need. We bring to you all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Lay your healing hands on them, Lord Jesus. May they sense your touch of love. And we just pause a moment if you want to name anyone known to you personally. Lord, Bring release to those who are bound in any way. May the captives be set free in Jesus' name. And at this time, we especially pray for all those suffering from COVID-19. We ask that you would hold them in your love and restore them, dear Jesus. Please raise up the help needed for all those who have had their treatment delayed or their operation cancelled. Thank you for all those in the NHS, the care sector and the vital services working tirelessly to care and provide for others. Sustain them, Lord, and protect them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, turn the tide of this pandemic and banish it from our land. Lord, I ask for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit on all who are listening. May they receive an outpouring of your living water, cleansing and renewing them. Open our hearts to you more and more and release your gifts in us, Lord Jesus, and fill us with your peace. We praise you and thank you and bless you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen.
and a prayer for CCHC. Lord, we bring to you Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre. Thank you for your wonderful provision and your faithfulness during these months. Jehovah Jireh, you are indeed our provider. Lord, help us to continue to place all our trust in you during these long months without income. And please continue to provide the oil and flour that is needed according to your will. We pray for the leadership team and trustees, Lord, that you would strengthen and guide them and grant them wisdom and discernment. And we ask your blessing on the staff on furlough. May they too know your love and provision. We entrust CCHC to your love and care and mercy, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we come to our final song, and it's from the breaking of the dawn to the setting of the sun, we will stand on every promise of your word.
And our closing prayer, and it's by Nick Fawcett. God of grace, breathe health into our bodies, love into our hearts, peace into our minds and joy into our spirits. Send us out now, made new, made whole, to live life fully as you desire. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. And so every blessing to you all. It's been lovely to share this time with you. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And in the meantime, stay safe and keep warm. Bye-bye.